Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on SQL Server Integration Services performing basic tasks. Here's what you'll learn on the tutorial. We'll look at how to create basic packages in integration services, including how to create a flat file data source, how to export this information to a table in SQL Server, how to complete and run your packages, how to run SQL commands within a package, and finally how to use data viewers to monitor the flow of data. So let's get started. Before I create the package which will import our data, what I want to do is show what it's trying to do. I've got a text file set up called apps.txt, you can see the name there, which contains three things. It contains the name of an app, the rating of it, and the summary of what it actually does. And it's heavily influenced by what I've currently got on my iPhone. And what we're going to do is import that data into a SQL Server table, so we end up with a table like this. The app ID will be generated automatically as a unique number, and then we'll import the name of the app, its rating, and the synopsis, which if you notice has been truncated to 50 characters. So the first thing we need to be able to do to achieve this is to create a project. And to do that, I'm going to load up SQL Server Data Tools, if I was using earlier versions of SQL Server, I'd load Business Intelligence Development Studio instead, but they do pretty much the same thing. So now what I'm going to do is create a new project to contain my packages. So I can do that by choosing File from the menu, choosing New, and choosing Project. I'm going to make sure that I'm creating an Integration Services project. I'm going to make sure I'm not using the wizard, and I'm going to give it a name and I'll call it Basic Project for Tutorial, which seems a reasonable name, and then choose OK. I'll just close down the Getting Started window, which I, I never use, and you can see the Visual Studio has automatically created a package on my behalf called package.dtsx. I'm going to create a different one, just to show how it's done. By right-clicking on my SSIS packages, choosing to create a new SSIS packages and having created it I'm then going to rename it by clicking once on the name, clicking once again, selecting the file name and changing it to basic package and pressing return. And having done that I've got two windows open at the top here. What I'm going to do is right click on the one I want to use and choose close all but this. And what that handy little shortcut menu does is close down every window apart from the one I'm actually working with. So in order to be able to create a flat file connection, the first thing I need to do is create a connection manager. And I can do that in one of two places, either within the project to make it globally available to all the packages, or, as in this case, within the connection managers for the package itself. So you can see it says right click here to add a new connection manager. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to create a new flat file connection. I'm going to leave the name of the connection manager as a default because I think it sums it up pretty well. And then I can choose to assign a file name to it. And I'm going to double click on the file called apps.txt which contains a list of the apps to be imported. And you can see there's a tick in the box saying column names in the first data row to signify the fact that the first row of my file contains the names of the columns. I'm then going to go onto columns and the column delimiter has been cleverly detected to be a vertical bar. You can see there's a range of choices but in this case I can leave it as the one which has been selected for me by Visual Studio. I can then go onto preview and check that my data is going to be imported sensibly and all is looking good so I can choose OK. So what that does is create a connection to the file on the hard disk. But what I now need to do is to create a data task with a source which uses that flat file connection. So I'm going to go to the control flow and I'm going to double click on the data flow task to add one in to my package. I'll just move it down a bit and what this is going to do if I rename it is it's going to import all the apps. So I'm going to rename it like that. 
Now, to go from this control flow task to the corresponding data flow tasks, the simpler thing to do is just to double click on the icon on the left hand side. And you can see the window switch from control flow to data flow. So eventually I'm going to have a source and a destination in this, but let's start with the source telling me I'm getting the information from my text file of apps. So if I scroll down, I'll see there's a section on the SSIS toolbox called Other Sources. And what I'm going to do is click on the flat file source and drag it into my window. Now I'm going to rename that and call it List of Apps. You can see there's a red cross to the right of it because I haven't yet assigned which file I'm going to use. So perhaps that's a good first thing to do. If I double click on the icon on the left to edit this particular um, data flow task, what Visual Studio will do is detect the fact there's only one flat file connection manager available to me and automatically assign that to this task. If I then go onto columns, you can see that it's automatically picking up on the columns in the underlying file, app name, rating and summary. And I could, if I like at this point, rename those to something different but I'm going to use the default names and just choose OK. So that's great, I've got my list of apps as my source. What I now need to do is say where they're going and I need to create a SQL Server destination. So it's the same story for the SQL Server destination as it was for the flat file data source. The first thing I need to do is to create a connection to my data. And again, I can do that either as part of my package or as part of my project. Now on this occasion I'm going to make it part of my project because it's quite likely I want to use the same connection to my SQL Server database several different times in several different packages. So I'm going to right click on connection managers in my Solution Explorer window, choose to create a new connection manager and for SQL Server the best one to use is OLEDB. So I'm going to click on that and then choose add. Now you can see I've got a couple of connections I've created already but just to illustrate what's going on I'm going to create a brand new one by clicking on the new button. I can choose here the name of my server but anybody who's used SQL Server will know that it's much quicker to type it in. The full stop there denotes that I'm using my local machine as a server and SQL 2008R2 happens to be the named instance on my machine. I'm using Windows Authentication, so now I can choose the name of my database, which happens to be SSIS, and then I can choose OK. And you can see it's created that, in fact it was already there, so I can choose OK. And what I can now do is create my destination. You can see it's put not only Connection Manager in my Solution Explorer window, but also in brackets a project version of it for use in my data flow task. What I can now do is find my destination. To do that I'm going to go to other destinations and I'm going to add in an OLEDB, de OLEDB destination task by clicking on it and dragging it into my data flow window. Now practice suggests to me that the best thing to do at this point is to immediately link the two things up together. So if I click on my source and drag the blue arrow, which represents successful data, directly onto the destination, the red arrow immediately disappears, although if I click back on the source, it will reappear. In a later video, I'll show how to reconfigure errors so that they flow to a different um, place in your task. But for the moment, we'll concentrate on getting our destination to work. You can see if I let my mouse linger over it, it says that no connection manager has been assigned. So what I'll do is double click on that destination and it will automatically assign the only connection manager available in this project, which is the one I've just created. Had there been more than one, I would have had to click on the drop down list and choose the one I wanted to use. What I can then do is choose the table in the underlying database. I'm in the happy position of only having one table available to me, so that's not going to take very long. And then I can click on Mappings. And what this will do is ask me which column in my source I want to go to which column in my destination. And what I can do is click on each column and drag it onto the destination column. 
and it just so happens in this case that the three columns are in the correct order, but that wouldn't always be the case, in which case some of these lines would cross each other. I'm not going to do anything about the app ID because the value of that will automatically be set by SQL Server. It's what's called an identity column. So then I can choose OK to confirm that and what I should have is a package which when I run it will import data from the source, the flat file, into my SQL Server table, the destination. So let's see if it actually works. In a previous tutorial I showed that one way to run a package was just to right click on it and choose execute package. There's another way which is to set the package as a startup object. Now each project can have one and only one startup objects. So what this means is when I run the entire project, which I can do by clicking on this green triangle or by pressing the F5 key, it will run the package which I've made the startup object. So let's see if it works. So if I press the F5 key or click on the green triangle, you can see that it's going to display green ticks next to each of my data flow tasks to show everything's worked perfectly, except it hasn't. There's a red cross next to the very first task. It can often be quite difficult to find out what's gone wrong. There's two windows which you may find helpful, the error list and the output list. And in this case, the output list will show what's happened while my project was running. If you can't see the output list, you can display it by choosing a view from the menu and then choosing output. So if I scroll up and down my list, you can see if I can find it over here, the problem is some truncation has occurred and the truncation row disposition, if I keep reading across to the right, has been set to cause a failure. Let me show you what this means in practice. If I stop my execution of the package by clicking on the blue link and then I can edit my source by double clicking on it, on the error output tab you can see there's a column for what happens in the event of truncation. And you can see that if the summary is being truncated, which it is because I'm having to try to squeeze it into a 50 character SQL Server column width, it will fail the component, which will fail the package. So what I'm going to do is change that to say ignore any failure and then just choose OK. So let's try running this again. Again, I can click on the green triangle, which will run the startup object, which is this package. And this time I'm hoping everything will work perfectly and I get the two green ticks appearing. So I can click on my blue link and I can go to SQL Server to see whether it's been working. So let's try refreshing my query. And you can see it's worked rather too well. Every time it's run successfully, it's added records onto the existing table. What I'd now like to do is find a way to delete the contents of the table before the package even begins so that each time it loads in a fresh set of data. So let's have a look at how to do that. What I want to do then is to go to the control flow and add in a task to empty out the contents of the table before I then import all the apps from the text file. In the favorites at the top of the SSIS toolbox, there's the data flow task, which we've already used, and the execute SQL task. It must be important, otherwise it wouldn't be in the favorites. So I'm going to add that in at the top of my control flow, and then I'm going to connect the two tasks up, so they'll happen in that order, because this is the control flow window. So first it will execute my SQL task, then it will import all the apps. Now there's a red cross next to the execute SQL task because I haven't yet set which database in SQL Server it's going to execute the command against. So I can double click on my task and change a few properties. It's good news that it's using the connection type of OLADB because that's the default you want to use for SQL Server. I can click on the connection property and choose to use my SSIS connection so it's linking up to the same database. And my statement, if I click on the three dots to go into the build button, can just delete all the records from the table called apps. So I'm just going to write delete from apps, which will do the job. So you need to know a little bit of SQL at this point. I can then choose OK to confirm that and choose OK again. 
Now this time when I run the package, what will happen is it will execute my SQL task, which will delete all the records from the underlying table, and then it will import them afresh from my apps.txt flat file. So when I go into SQL Server, what I should see is a list of each app appearing once and once only. So first I'll run my project, and hopefully I'll see green text appearing everywhere. Excellent. I'm then going to stop it running. Now if I go into SQL Server, and refresh my window, you can, which I've already done on a previous occasion, you can see each app has been imported once and once only. Just to prove that is working, look at these IDs, 36 all the way up to 42. If I now go back into my package and run it again, and then stop it running, and then go back to SQL Server and re-execute the query, you can see it has deleted the old apps and created a new new set afresh. That completes the package, except that the last thing I was going to do is show how to use a data viewer to monitor the data flowing between the two tasks in the data flow window. So to monitor the data flowing down this pipe, all I need to do is right click on it and choose to enable a data viewer. And when you do that, a little magnifying glass symbol pops up to show a data view has been applied. What will happen now is when I run my package, a data viewer pops up and execution is suspended. And you can see that by this rotating amber symbol. So I could at this point either copy my data to another um, Excel workbook, for example, or I can just carry on executing my package, in which case it will finish. And then I can close down my data viewer and stop executing my package. That's almost a full story for data viewers. They're handy little things to show how data is flowing down a data flow. One other thing you can do to them though is to choose which columns they should display. And I can do that by right clicking on the data viewer, choosing to edit it. And down the left hand side of the properties, the path editor, I can choose data viewer and I can decide which columns I want to display. So I'm going to decide that my app name isn't very interesting to me, so I can transfer that back over to the unused columns and choose OK. So if I now execute my package again, the data view will still pop up, but I've no longer got the app name column. So I'll just stop running my application, and that completes this part of the tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on basic tasks in integration services. If you want to find lots of other tutorials and other training material on SQL Server and other Microsoft applications, go to www.wiseowl.co.uk.